All right, grab yourself a cup of coffee. This might be a longer video. Today, we're going to add a little bit of validation to our app. I said I wasn't gonna do this in the past. Um, actually, what I said was, if this is actually going to be a production application that people are going to use, you wanna add some validation, right? Because we don't want people entering some bad data into our app and something going wrong. And I guess I implied by that that I wasn't going to do that in these videos, but here I am. Um, I will get to adding a database, I promise. That'll probably come up in the next one. I said it was going to be in this one, but here we are. I thought it might be good to add some validation, maybe show you my thought process. And you might think differently, and that's perfectly fine on how you would like to do this, but at least uh, get some perspective on how I would do it. So as of right now, if we start the app and we go to add a budget, I can put any number I want into the total budget amount. So if I put, it doesn't even have to be a number actually, I can put an A and if I go to create a budget, it'll just throw an exception rather than say, hey, this isn't an actual like double and this isn't a numeric value that we can use as a budget. And also, if the start date comes after the end date like this, there's nothing telling the user that's also wrong because maybe they don't notice the start date and end date and they get these confused and they it's an honest mistake. Um, there's no way of them to know that. So that's what I wanna do. Those are the two things I wanna check before we create the budget. And then also, if it's incorrect, instead of the flyout coming out saying, you know, budget added or was successful or whatever it's saying right now, I forget. We can change it to be the error message that you need to fix these things first before we add the budget. So that's what we're gonna work on today. It'll probably be a longer one, but hopefully it's informative. And I think this is a very important step, especially if you make applications that other people are going to use, right? Because humans make mistakes all the time. I see it all the time. And you want to limit the amount of mistakes that they can make. So in our uh, solution explorer here in this project, I'm going to create a folder that's going to hold our business logic. And I'll call it that. And in here, we're going to add a static class. And I'm gonna add this class, uh, budget validation. And I make it a static class because I don't wanna instantiate it before using it. I just want to reference it and use it whenever I want. So public static class budget validation. And we're just gonna have one method. And my thought process here is this method's gonna return a string and maybe I should write this out first. So public uh, static string validate, validate budget. And let's write the parameters. Uh, the first one's going to be the string of the budget because it's a text box. And then date time, which can be nullable. So it could be possible that uh, what they give us isn't they didn't even enter a date, they just hit create budget and it's nullable. So I'll put a um, question mark after that to denote that. And this one's gonna be start date. And then same thing with the end date, date time nullable and date. So if we don't do this and we go to do comparisons later, uh, it will not let us compile. So let's talk about my thought process on what the return value is gonna be. So I'm gonna put three forward slashes above and here's where we can add a summary. We can talk about each um, parameter of this method. And really what I care about is what's going to return. So returns, returns a, or an empty string if no error. And then if there are errors with the data that the user gives us to create a budget with, we will add those errors to a single string. If errors, I guess that's a new sentence. If errors, string of those errors. It's probably not the best worded uh, returns, but you get the point, hopefully. So let's create that string to hold our errors. And at the very start, we just want it to be an empty string for now. And then at the very end, return that string. And then the middle here is where we're going to do all of our validation. So the first thing I want to validate is, is the string that they give us before we parse it and turn it into a double, 
can it be done? Is it, is it actually going to be able to be turned into a double, or is it going to throw an exception when we try to parse it? And there's an, actually a nice function I found online that was really helpful called try parse, where it does try to parse it for you, and if it isn't valid, it'll return a boolean that is false, and if it is valid, it will give you that valid double. And to hold that valid double, I'm just going to create a valid or a, a, a double called val. And the boolean to tell us if this string is a valid double or not, we can say that is called is num, and then double dot try parse is the method. And here you can see the two parameters we're going to give it. We're going to give it the string that we're going to potentially turn into a double. So that one's going to be budget. And then the out keyword and val is if this can indeed be a double, that's where the double is going to live. It's going to put that double in our val variable. And then here we can check is, is num equal to false. So it's not a valid double. If so, we can add to our errors string plus equals uh, budget amount invalid. And then let me put a comment up here to say this is the budget amount validation. So we can kind of separate it in this method. And then below here is going to be the dates validation. And I just thought of something. Uh, I, I don't know why I didn't think of it earlier. Before we even do all of this, they might even give us an empty string to begin with for the budget. They might not even enter anything for the budget. So right off the bat, we might want to say if that string budget is equal to an empty string, we can also add to the error message no budget given. And then else, they did put something in there that's when we can check if it's valid or not. So I guess we're going even a step further and making sure that they actually give us something. I guess that, that should have came in my mind first. I don't know why it didn't. And I guess we want to do the same thing with dates. We want to make sure that they gave us dates for the start date and the end date. So if start date is null or end date is equal to null, Let's add to the errors message, and then I'll add a invalid dates and put date or the S in parentheses in case uh, they didn't make either of them valid. Then let's also put um, a new line at the end of these so they can, the error messages can be separated. We also want to check else if start date is after end date. That's obviously a problem. So errors start date is after end date. And then lastly, the last one I can think of, maybe you can think of something else I'm forgetting. Start date is equal to end date. Errors message can include start date and end date are the same. Yeah, are the same. I think it's fine. So these are the things I can think of off the top of my head to check for. Maybe you can think of some other things they can do wrong and you can add that to your validation logic if you're following along. But as of now, this is what I got. And so if everything's good, it'll re just return an empty string, right? And that's what we'll check when we decide what kind of fly out do we want to show and when we go to save the budget. Okay, so now that we have our validate budget method all worked out, now we need to display that to the user. If there is an error or if there isn't, we'll go back to our old faithful, you know, budget has been added successfully message. So I think what I'm going to do in our main Windows XAML.CS, I'm gonna create a few other methods here and I'm gonna make these private and we can call it show errors or show error maybe i don't know you might think of a better name than me but it's going to take in a string of error and here i'm going to copy this part 
where we show uh, the success message. I'm just going to copy the part. And before we show the message, I can say update flyout dot background is going to be equal to brushes dot red. I'm going to make the background a red color with the white font. And then let's go back to our flyout. And something I need to do, the text block inside of that flyout, we want to give a name so I can reference it in the code behind. So I can name it like flyout text block. Then here, the flyout text block dot text can be equal to the error that we passed, right? I think that's all we need to do. We need to change the background color red, change the text block inside of it to show the errors. And I think that will be everything. Hopefully all the errors fit on uh, this flyout. And then similarly, I want to go ahead and create, actually, let's just copy this whole thing. I want to create a similar one when there's success. So instead of show error, show success. And we want to make the background green. And instead of it being the errors, we're not going to pass that into this method. It's just going to say the same thing, not an S. It's just going to say the same thing. Um, successfully added budget. So now I can get rid of all of this part after we added the budget and we want to show the flyout. Now I can call that show success method. And then up here, let's say string error message. And this error message is going to be equal to that budget validation static class we created and the validate budget method we're going to call and pass in the budget and the start date, which is the start date picker dot selected date and the end date picker dot selected date. And here we can say if error message is not equal to an empty string. Let's show that error, pass in the error message, and then we'll return. Because we don't want to run the rest of this. We don't want to create the budget and then add it to our list of budgets and show success, obviously. We want to stop right here. And I think that's everything we need to do. Let's go ahead and try it a bit. First, let me, I guess, put a breakpoint right here so we can see what the error message ends up being. So I'm going to put some bad data into this form. So now I'm going to put a valid date. I'm just going to put a bad budget total. So we'll put A for the total budget, create it. Our error message is budget amount invalid, which is correct. We'll continue. And now we get budget amount invalid as our error message. And I noticed something, uh, it closed this afterwards, which I guess when it's invalid, we don't want it to do. So at the very end of the show error, we don't want the budget stack panel visibility to be collapsed until they give us a successful one or the user closes it, which we haven't given them that option yet, but that will come. So let's keep it open if it isn't valid and try it now uh, with some good dates and a bad total. Continue, budget amount valid, and now this doesn't disappear. Now let's put a valid budget but let's put some bad dates. So the six comes after the fifth. So this should throw an error as well. And let's see, hover over error message, start date is after end date, which is correct. So we'll go ahead and look. Yep, start date's after end date, cool. And then now let's do a combo of the two. So I'll throw an A now in the total budget too. So now both are incorrect, both the total and the dates. If I hover over it, we get two error messages. Let's make sure they're both on their own lines in the flyout. Yes, but you can't see them too well. So, okay, so the flyout wasn't given enough room. I went ahead and I created the height of the first row in this grid from 60 to 80. Now, if we go ahead and show both, we're able to see both of the two error messages. Maybe it doesn't last long enough. So let's change the interval from two seconds to three see if that gives us enough time. Budget amount valid, start date is after end date. I think so, and you can play around with that as well, or even do it in the code behind if you wanna change it. When, success, when it's a success message, you can make it like 
two seconds or when it's an error message you can make it four seconds you can play around with those numbers if you want to but i'm going to keep it like three seconds across the board and now if i go ahead and add a valid one just to make sure it turns green when everything's good let's give it some valid data now we have successfully added the budget and here it is on the left so everything looks, looks good on this end and now we have some good validation in case the user puts anything that they shouldn't and that's definitely something you want to do in a real world application so thanks for watching hopefully uh, you learned something out of this and at least if nothing else you learned about my thought process making some validation and uh, i hope to see you in the next one i think we're going to make the database finally in the next video and add that to this application so stay tuned for that and i'll see you then